This is the Goulding, Goulding, Golding and Co. flute. It has, um, of course, it's got this stamp at the top that says, I don't know if you can see it, you can see it in the photos. Uh, Golding, Dalamain, 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 uh, Potter and Co. Uh, Soho, Soho Square, London, of course. And then, no, no stamp on the head joint apart from a, there's a patent stamp on the um, ivory ring here. Um, there is Golding and Co on one, two, three joints there, there, and there. It's um, it is stained boxwood with ivory ferrules, and obviously the keywork is silver. Also. Um, Try and get in focus. It has runners between all the keys um, on on the blocks. There are runners. Uh, I can see this. You can see in the photos. I'll show you in the photos. Anyway, so it's good flute. I'll, I think it was nineteen. Was it nineteen fourteen or sixteen to twenty three? They record. They they think that this firm was acting under the names that stamped on the flute. It's a really nice flute. It's hardly been, um, I don't think it's hardly been played. It's definitely not been um, uh, uh, altered in any way. One of the things you can see is the embouchure is quite small. It's the way that it was uh, intended to be. Quite a lot of these flutes, I, I've been told the, the embouchures have been made larger. Um, certainly not an instrument for Irish traditional music or traditional music is a classical instrument, which is why when you hear me play it, you will... Um, You'll understand that uh, why it isn't sounding as good because I play traditional stuff. Um, um, what was going to say? Yeah. So one alteration. Um, the they've had a I'm trying to focus on this. The this f the short f has been um, fixed at some point. Again, you can look at the photographs. I'll show you the photographs more easily. But check that out. The C sharp key is a tiny bit sticky. Um, and that F, uh, I mean, it works for me most of the time, um, but perhaps the the pewter needs to be looked at on on the on the short F, um, but the the C sharp sticks a bit. Uh, everything else is working very well. Um, I've on the cork inside here, just put a little bit of tape um, in it. As you see in the photographs, just all around it to it's a bit loose, so it just um, tightens it up and makes it. Um, Sort of falling out, I guess. It's in great condition. Um, uh, oh yeah, so it, it plays at different pitches, obviously as well. Um, I find that I can actually I can actually play it at four forty. Get my tuner right. You can play it at four forty if you sort of lip up. Um, So that's a bit sharper. Anyway, so it plays at four forty, and uh, also, but as you go down, it sort of gets a bit nicer. As you can see on the um, oh, goodness, not focusing. As you can see there. Again, look at the photographs. Um, it's got a five and a four number. This obviously uh, represents the um, different pitches or something. I can't really remember. Um, but anyway, so the, as the shooting slide goes out, you go down to four thirty um, and four fifty, and um, it still it keeps its tone and uh, intonation. The one thing about the intonation on this is that the D is tiny bit flat. Um, bottom D that is. Uh, and if you just lip up for that D or just put a little bit more pressure on, I find that it comes in tune. But it's it's very very much in keeping with uh, flutes of this age and style. my best it's not the type of flute that I usually play and then bringing it pretty much all the way out which should take it to around about 415 
which one best I can. <laughs> Gives you an idea. It's like, it's really nice, original condition, minimal work uh, on it to make it absolutely sing. Um, and I hope it ends up in the hands of someone who will use it and love it.